Hello and welcome to Channel's Book Club. I'm Olakunle Kasumo. Everyone agrees that corruption is a massive problem in Africa. But how should it be tackled? Well, there is no easy answer to that. While politicians try to do their own things and different organizations champion campaigns, some use their writing and storytelling skills to try and deal with the problem from an educational perspective. One of such people is Dr. Amos Dele Dada, who is a chemical engineer, clergyman, and writer. Amos Dada has written this book titled, To the Rescue, Say No to Corruption. It's a fictional story with a message to stay away from corruption. He joined us to review his book and explore its sensitive subjects. Enjoy this. Dr. Dada, nice to have you on Channels Book Club. Well, it's a wonderful experience to be here. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining I us. I have been looking forward to this. Uh, I'm glad it's actually taking off. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, to the rescue, say no to corruption. That's right. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let, let's try and explain what you've done here okay. for somebody out there who is probably not very aware of okay. what you've done. Okay. Your core subject here is corruption. Yeah. But you have written a fictional story. Yeah. To convey your message yes. on, on corruption. Yeah. Tell me a bit more about that. All right. Uh, as I said, I'm interested in getting the youth. Leading helps them to train their mind. Leading helps them to develop their capacity. And uh, the youth have a way of getting things through storyline. It's like they like watching movies. But movies come from this one. But where reading becomes more advantageous is because it helps you develop your mindset. It helps you focus. It helps you develop your intellectual capacity. So it's on the premises of that that I know that we can help them do what we need to do. Because reading actually is not just for reading. Thing. Yeah, you can read for entertainment and all those things, but you must read for a purpose. And the purpose I found here is that, look, we have challenges. We have been wrongly mentored. We have been wrongly taught. We have come to a society that has become highly materialistic. And we can't continue like that. So, that's the premises by which I come that, look, let me write something that can help them not just follow through in their development, mind development, intellectual development, but that can help them to challenge the status quo, challenge the situation, and become a better citizen. Uh, maybe I will go on with, but you see, you have a storyline that can help them in all facets, in all facets. So... so so I am talking to a novelist with a mission. Because yes. there are quite a number of novelists, yes. fictional writers, yeah. who, who write yeah. almost entirely just because they want to entertain. Yes. You know, so yeah. I mean, their are, are creative juices flow yeah. in, in, in that direction. They mm -hmm. just want to entertain, yeah. captivating story yeah. and all that. Yeah. But you've set out yeah. clearly with a mission. Here, That's right. A That's message right. Here. That's right. And then you then crafted the story. Yeah. To, to, how, to, do you, how, how did you strike the balance between entertainment and passing that message well, across? Well, that's why this book is written. Uh, I first of all try to educate them. Why do we even read? If, if you go through this book, you'll find out there's uh, uh, an area where I developed, whereby in the school you have um, a debate, a quiz, just as we used to have in secondary school in those days, what are the advantages of education, what are the advantages of no education, you know? When you have that understanding why you are even going to school, and you now know that schooling is not just to make you feel good, it is that it's your life, it's what helps you in life, that is what helps you. And you know also that it is an opportunity to impart your life, because if I'm not educated now, it's the likelihood that you talking to me will not be here. Do you understand? Yeah. But 
I've gone beyond that level. I've gone to now discover that everyone that has impacted his or her generation use educational platform. Whether it is in development, whether it's aircraft you are developing, social media or whatever, your educational background helps you to do that. But like I said, my own is that I am an African. I live in Canada. I see development there. I see progress. And I'm wondering why can we not make progress? So I found that leadership has been our pain. But it's not just leadership now. It is that our leadership is corrupt. So I want to find a way by which I can help the coming youth to use the education they are passionate about, to use the education that they know will help them to achieve that purpose of fighting corruption in their generation. Just to summarize, mm -hmm. let's go through that story. Okay. The, 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 this novel now, the okay. story. The storyline. Story. Yes. Okay, the storyline is uh, there are two sets of people. I have Tosi and Kola who are young people in the university. They met themselves, you know, while they were in the university. They were passionate. And uh, it teaches them how they went on the line of courtship, but modest courtship, not engaging themselves in a destructive way, not uh, fornication as we say it, you know. They, 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 they built on the principles their parents guided them. And when they found themselves doing youth court too, they went on to do that one, engaging the, uh, the little one, empowering them. Eventually, they got married. One of them becomes uh, the EFCC boss. And just like we have now, I expected better from the EFCC. I better uh, a forum where every week you are, it's not people speculating. It's telling them this is what you are doing, this is what you are doing. So, she evolved in that one, and the husband became a lecturer, so they are supportive, they raise their children. Then we have the other one, another scenario, Paola and Kenny. They were retired officers from Nigeria, and because of this poverty uh, in our community, that, uh, I mean corruption in our community that has um, breeded uh, uh, corruption, poverty, and all kinds of things, they have to leave the country. And you see a lot of brain drain going on. So they emigrated to South Africa. In South Africa, though, even though they were engineers here, yeah, they worked in the refinery and so on, they found themselves doing many jobs because they have to survive. One of them actually was wrongly terminated and so on. But he now had a big brother in, uh, in the government in Nigeria who told him to come over, you know. So using him as a front, you know, all the things he wanted to do, inflation of uh, contracts, manipulation of the system, you know, using the technical uh, terms, come with a white man, you know, that will help you, you know, make presentation, knowing fully well that this thing is not going to work. All they want to do is siphon. So this guy got, gets the money, you know, and uh, from there became a power broker, you know, and then began to be the one to become the godfather, you know, installing people. You know, as uh, I don't need to tell them everything. Everything. 